Hello everybody, it's Al with Bobcad, uh, the Partner Products Manager, and today I wanted to cover some general navigation of Bobcad as far as uh, its settings and uh, interface, the way that it looks, and uh, different tools that you can use when navigating through Bobcad. Now if you're looking at my screen right now, you're probably going, what the heck is going on? And as you can see, there's all kinds of icons that are on the screen and windows that are layered on top of each other and it should look extremely confusing to you because I know it looks extremely confusing to me. So what I wanted to talk about is how to customize your interface and clean up uh, you know the way that it looks and how to turn on and off icons or how to move toolbars around that uh, can be extremely useful as you uh, continue to use and learn our software. So the first thing that you'll notice is all of these toolbars have these little dotted black lines next to them. And what you can do is you can grab that dotted line and you can drag it off the screen and then it has this X box and you can X them out. So you can go through and you can turn off all of these different toolbars. Now just so you know, all of these toolbars can be accessed by multiple different ways or all the functions that are held in these toolbars. So some people like to choose uh, graphically selecting them. Uh, some people like to, wow, look at that one. That one's super huge. I don't even know if I can turn that off with the way the screen that I have laid out. Uh, so these can be accessed through, um, yeah, I can't even turn that one off, it's so big. Okay, so uh, they can be accessed through the icons, they can be accessed through the menus that are listed across the top of the screen, they can be accessed through your right mouse button, and then there's also hotkeys as well that you can use, and they can be accessed through those. Now you can turn these on or off very easily, you can go to the main blue bar here and you can right click, and you'll see there's all these checkboxes here. So you can turn these on or off just by clicking on these checkboxes. So you can see I can turn the view on or I can turn the view off. Okay, so that covers how to turn your toolbars on and off. The other thing that you have over here is all of these different menus. Uh, the Layer UCS Post Manager, the Measure Entity Window, and the Data Cam Tree Manager. Now what you can do with these is you can drag them across the screen. Now I personally prefer to have my Measure Entity uh, window on the top of my layer UCS post manager and then also my data cam tree manager on the left. This way I can measure geometry uh, and it will be displayed here. I can turn my layers on and off that will be displayed here and then all of my uh, data entry and my cam tree is located on the left. This is my preferred setup. The other thing you'll notice as well is there's different icons that are listed on these toolbars here and if you'd like you can customize that. So you can go to preferences, customize go to the command if you wanted to add a command like um, the roller cam you can click and drag it up on the screen or you can pull it down off of the screen and then it will go away from that toolbar so those are just some of the ways that you can customize the interface in which Bobcat is displaying the other thing you can do as well is go to your preferences setting part and you have a, a variety of different color settings that you can choose here you can turn off your axis display, adjust your units, uh, change your dimensional arrows, dimensioning tools, point styles, and this allows you to fully customize the interface and the way that the software works. Now, now that we understand a little bit more about the layout, the next thing that I really wanted to talk about had to do with uh, your selection options and also selection mask versus layers. One of the things that you'll do a lot when working with solids is you're going to convert entities or you're going to take a solid and you're going to convert it into wireframe and the method that I typically recommend is to create a new layer, make that layer active, go to utilities, extract edges single, pick the face that you want the wireframe from, right click OK and then you can turn off your initial layer which makes it really easy to go through and select your wireframe. Now that's not the only way in which you can uh, make the selection of wireframe easy, okay? 
this is the way I prefer to do it because it I can separate out different layers and I can turn layers on and off which makes it easy to view what I'm working with again uh, you know my measure entity window here I'll just touch on that real quick I can click on an entity a, a line or an arc and it will display information about it until I measure another one but again uh, when we're dealing with selection you do have a number of different selection options now it's important to understand that if we were going to go through a, a cam function here, the software would put you in selection mode automatically. Or if we were going to use an editing function like translate, the software is going to put you in a selection mode automatically. If you're not utilizing a function or a feature, can you select geometry? Well, no, <laughs> not right off the bat. Uh, by default, the software is not in selection mode. You have to put yourself in selection mode. To put yourself in selection mode, you can use the selection toolbar here and choose the black arrow, and then now we're in selection mode, or you can right click and choose select, and now you're in selection mode. Now, why would you wanna be in selection mode if you weren't utilizing a feature? Well, sometimes you wanna select geometry and you wanna change something about it. You may wanna change the color of it, the line style, the layer, the point style. Maybe you want to modify it to the current layer, modify to the current line style or current layer. Or maybe you want to get some information about it as far as the number of entities that it takes uh, or the number of entities that it's made up of or the bounding box of it or the center of gravity of it. So there's a variety of different things that you can do that are not feature based uh, when selecting the geometry, but typically what I'm using when I'm selecting geometry is either to select something to delete it, which I can hit the trash can or delete on my keyboard, or selecting it to modify its layer, to put it on a different layer, or to modify its color to make it a different color. Okay. Now, one of the reasons why I use layers so often is when you have a solid and you have wireframe, if I go to select the wireframe with the solid turned on, you can see that uh, even with a shift click, it makes it very difficult to do that. Now I can use S on my keyboard to turn off the skins and shift left click and you know, I can, I actually can select it, but it, to me, it's kind of difficult, you know? So one of the other options that we have is this thing called a selection mask. Uh, this is a very useful tool. Uh, sometimes I like to have this docked on my screen. Um, it's not going where I want it to go right now. But uh, one of the things that's nice about this selection mask is I can go to selection mode and right now, all the different types of objects or entities like surfaces or wireframe, they're all turned on. So if I go to select something, they'll all be available to me. But you can come in here and you can turn them all off and then just turn on lines and arcs. So now I can window in my geometry and the only thing that would be selected would be my wireframe. Or if I want to, I can go to selection mode turn everything off and just pick surfaces or solids. Now the only thing that would be selected would be the surfaces and solids. So the selection mask allows you to select geometry types that you want. Again, another very useful tool. Thank you everybody for joining us here today. More topics to come. Stay tuned.